all for coming out to our presentation tonight. My name is Alex. I'm Maddie. I'm Rebecca. I'm Alexa. And we are Team Ocean Lit, and we're going to talk about our work that we did on the Edwin Project, creating an ocean literacy online module. Uh, so here's a quick overview of our presentation. We'll go through the introduction, the background, the methods, data analysis, recommendations, and then the conclusion. Before we talk about the specific work that we did on our project, we're going to talk about why the work that we're doing is important. So, we love the Earth, it is our planet, it is our home, and if we wanted to continue being our home for a long time, we need to make a change to a more sustainable lifestyle, because currently we're facing a lot of issues with resource scarcity, and here are some facts to demonstrate that. So, the population is growing rapidly, and by the year 2030, almost half the population will be living in areas of high water stress. There's more carbon dioxide currently in the atmosphere than there has been at any point in the past 800,000 years. And we waste millions of tons of food each year, most of which is probably still edible. So, as Kim President said it best, um, doing nothing is a great way to change nothing, and the best way to go about changing things is to educate the youth of today because they're going to be the leaders of tomorrow. So instead of doing nothing, education for sustainable development was developed. And sustainable development is meeting the needs of the current generation without compromising the needs of future generations. And education for sustainable development is equipping people with the knowledge, skills, attitudes, and values to promote sustainable development. And the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization is the leading organization working to implement ESD globally. So there are 17 sustainable development goals that were developed by the United Nations. And we are currently working on sustainable development goal number 14, which works to improve life below water. And this goal was created because billions of people depend on the ocean for their livelihood, and the ocean is also facing issues with resource scarcity, including uh, fishing, uh, fishing stocks being overexploited, a bunch of carbon dioxide is going into the oceans, which leads to rising ocean acidification, and there's also increasing marine pollution. And this is particularly a problem in Namibia because only a small portion of the population lives on the coast. And there's also a lack of ocean sciences in the curriculum. So in order to So this is a problem because when there's no ocean sciences in the curriculum, at least a generation of adults that are unaware of the importance of the oceans. And this makes it harder to implement in the, into the curriculum. So the ocean literacy campaign was developed by educators and scientists to come up with ideas and concepts that every person should know about the ocean. And Part of the ocean literacy campaign is educating primary and secondary school learners. So ocean literacy is the understanding of the symbiotic relationship between humanity and the ocean. So the biggest threat facing the ocean is lack of ocean literacy, and in Namibia, only a small portion of the population lives on the coast. So many Namibians are unaware of the importance of the ocean, even though it's a big contributor to the economy and the climate. So, uh, the Ministry of Fisheries is a government organization that does research on the ocean in Swakman, but they felt that they weren't getting the information on the research that they were doing out to the rest of the country. So they developed an outreach program because in order to save the oceans, you need to be aware of what's going on with the ocean, and they reached out to our sponsor, EduVentures. And they reached out to our sponsor, EduVentures, because EduVentures does many education projects throughout Namibia, including the Edulink project, which is the one that we are working on, and the Edulink project works to train teachers in ESD through educators that are also trained in ESD. So our specific project comes in uh, by creating a module on ocean literacy for ESD educators to use to train Indian teachers to give the information to the students. So our overall research objective is how can we provide the Indian educators with the tools to the tools to teach ocean literacy related to sustainable development. And Maddie will go on talking about how we do that. So for our project, we split our methodology into five main phases. These phases are assess, identify, build, um, feedback, and information. And so as you can see in this timeline, this provides an overview of our work throughout the eight weeks here in Namibia. And it also highlights the um, duration of each of the phases of our methodology. So for, a week, for the first half of week one, um, spent during our assessment phase, which is going to be evaluating the past five of our study module. Um, the second half of week one, one of those we used to was identify things, and this was when we connected the research that we needed to identify other content that would actually be implemented into the module. Um, we three and four was during the build phase, this is when we actually constructed our module. Um, we thought we each other's welcome and sent it to the Ministry of Fisheries and Management and got some feedback 
um, on what we have created. And then last week, 67 from during the revision period, which is when we took that feedback from the ministry and as we took it into um, a final draft of our module. So as I mentioned before, the first phase is the assessment, and this is composed of an educator survey, educators interviews, and an initial meeting from ministry and issues. So during the first week, we sent out a survey to the educators that had used the past biodiversity module. Um, the main point of the survey was just to give some feedback on what they liked and disliked about the module itself. So as you can see here, um, one of the questions was, did you enjoy the biodiversity module? And most of the respondents um, said yes. And also, they felt, most of the respondents felt that the lessons were engaging. And then lastly, we asked them to rank each section of the module. And the element that they enjoyed the most was um, the games and the introductory video. And the part that they enjoyed the least was the note section. Also in the survey, we asked about the excursions, debates, and guest speakers. And we found that 88% of the respondents enjoyed the excursions and debates. And 100% of the respondents enjoyed the guest speaker. Um, some of the recommendations that we got from the survey were that the educators would like to see more than the to serve with examples, um, more hands-on activities, and more interactive elements in our culture learning model that we've been creating. So next, we conducted some interviews with the residential staff. And again, the point, of, the point of this question that we asked them was just to get some feedback on what they liked and disliked about the past module, and then also get some insight onto what they wanted to focus on in our culture literacy module. So the main takeaways from this was that they really liked the games that they saw in the past module, um, and they wanted to see um, less words on five, more competitive games um, such as Jeopardy. And lastly, we had a meeting with the Ministry of Fisheries, and in this meeting, we um, received an outline of the different subtopics that they'd like us to include in our module. So from this, we used these as research and created seven different lessons. Um, so the first lesson is education for sustainable development, then group plan, which is just a lesson containing um, certain facts about ocean importance, uh, then our oceans, our marine environment, intertidal ecology, marine food webs, marine resources, and lastly, human impact. So the second piece of our methodology is identify, and again, this is where we conducted the research for our own content. Um, and during this phase, we focused on different ways we could find um, how to implement ocean literacy content into other subjects that are already included in, in the Namibian curriculum. And we also looked at the resources that we could use to create um, the interactive games um, and activities that the ministry and the mentors wanted to see in our new module. And then lastly, we made sure that we touched upon each of the main topics that the ministry provided for us um, within our research. So the next phase is the software that we used to build our module, as well as the teaching tools that we integrated into our lab. So the four main software we used to build and present our module were Smart Notebook, PowerPoint, Google Classroom, and Animator. And Smart Notebook helped us to develop um, any activities for the interactive digital whiteboard, which is Smart Board. Uh, PowerPoint helped us to develop the lessons and like the slides and lessons to present the context content and make sure that they were aesthetically pleasing. And uh, Google Classroom was the learning management system we used to present and share our model. And Animator we used to develop uh, digital videos to present information. And this is an example of our smart lesson. So this is an activity where you can drag the Atlantic Ocean. which included 
any discussions or essay writing, and then a third was an excursion or um, experiment. So any hands on activities or field trips. Uh, the second round of feedback is from the Ministry of Fisheries, and their feedback focuses mainly on clarity, and uh, they were making sure that all their information was correct. So the final step of the methodology is the revision. So we use the feedback from the Ministry of Fishery and from adventures to make revisions. First, we made revisions to the lessons themselves, starting with formatting changes. So when we presented the lessons on the smart board, a lot of the text was cut off at the bottom of the page. So we had to move some things around to make sure they could all be viewed. Um, next, we made changes to the amount of content. So this is an example of one of our lessons on sublimity. And the Ministry of History asked us to add more content on the desalination process. Um, we also made changes to the content itself. So we had some incorrect pictures of fish and some wrong scientific names. So the Ministry of History helped us correct those. Next, we made a questionnaire of about 24 questions, three questions from each topic, and it was it will be given out at the very beginning and very end of the workshop, and it'll be used to show how much um, the teachers learned from the content, and it can show which lesson could be improved based on how much they remembered. We also made a content book. This book will be printed out and handed to all the teachers to take back to them to their classrooms. Um, this contains all the content from the lessons as well as extra content not included in the lessons. It also includes activities and games like worksheets, crosswords that they can print out and use in their classroom. It also includes a list of websites and resources that they can use to find more information on any of the topics if they want. Next, we made a lesson plan book. So this book is just for the educators who are running the workshop and they'll use it to facilitate the lessons. It has a lesson plan for every lesson as well as all of the digital, practical, and excursion activities so they can run those. Finally, we have a feedback survey. This is handed out to the teacher at the end of every lesson, and it will be used to gauge whether or not the lesson was engaging, what they liked about it, what they disliked. So this can be used by adventures and the ministry to make improvements to the lesson, and it can also be used by future WPR teams when they're making more modules for the end of the project. So the deliverables include the lesson themselves, content book, the lesson plan book, the questionnaire, and the feedback survey. So we have three main recommendations. The first is for the ministry. We recommend having different versions of the lesson and the activities so that they can run those in locations not by the ocean. A lot of the activities do need to view on the ocean. Two, as mentors, we recommend improved communication between the third party so that all the deliverables are set at the beginning of the project. And we recommend two future WPI groups um, to familiarize yourself with the smart technology before you get to the video so that you don't have to waste time um, kind of working through it while you're here. So to conclude first, we did the educator survey and we interviewed educators and interviewed the ministry during the assess phase. Then during the identify phase, we found the content for the module and we built the module. We got feedback from educators in the ministry. We made revisions in the module, finalized it, and then we made recommendations. So finally, uh, we would like to extend our deepest gratitude to everyone on this slide. Um, you guys all contributed to making our experience fantastic. Uh, okay.